Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another live analysis session with me, Patrick Munley. If you can hear me and you can see a Tickmill um, welcome screen, could you type a Y in the chat box just so I know you can, uh, you can hear and see? Thanks very much. Okay, so before we get going um, with today's content, as always, we want to adhere to uh, the risk disclaimer and um, most importantly, any views expressed during today's um, presentation are, are strictly mine. They are not uh, representative of Tickmill and uh, they certainly don't constitute investment advice. So with the risk disclaimer out of the way, um, for those who don't know me, um, my name is Patrick Manley. I've been uh, trading uh, since 2004-2005, uh, managing my own money. Uh, since 2013, I've taken on external investor capital through a managed account service. The performance you can see on the screen is, uh, is the monthly and yearly uh, return statistics, risk statistics um, for, that, for that service. And um, I guess what I pay attention to is or what's important for me is um, I'm not concerned about the outcome of, of uh, individual trades or a string of trades. I'm focused on uh, process and um, execution um, versus a, a trade plan and adhering to that plan. And I know then that in the next 100 trades, um, my edge will, will demonstrate itself. And, um, and as you can see, on an annual basis, I've, uh, I've been profitable uh, since 2013 uh, with that managed account service. So that's in terms of uh, where my focus is in, in terms of trading. It's very much about process. And uh, I know that if I adhere to that process, then uh, the numbers will take care of themselves. Um, alongside uh, my trading activity, which is mainly an end of day execution for me now, I predominantly trade off the daily charts as a rule um, from time to time. Uh, I do see setups on the intraday charts and we'll, uh, we'll trade those, but uh, as, a, as, a, as a rule, I, I trade on the daily charts. And so uh, I have quite a bit of time on my hands. Um, so a couple of other projects I'm involved in, obviously with Tickmail, I'm a resident market expert, and um, I provide a daily market outlook and a, a daily setup that I'm watching. You can subscribe to that through, um, through the Tickmail blog site. Uh, I also um, manage uh, and run a trading education um, service through a company called FX Career Swap. And um, what we're basically doing there is taking uh, emerging retail trading talent, um, giving them education and support. And then um, once they've completed a, a structured program, uh, we actually fund the traders who uh, complete the program. Uh, and help them overcome what really most um, most new traders struggle with, and that's the issue of capitalization. Um, because you can have an excellent trading plan, and uh, and you can adhere to that. And uh, you know, even if you're delivering 30 to 50 percent a year, let's say, which is excellent returns, um, if you're only trading at a thousand dollar account or, uh, or a thousand pound account, that isn't going to um, add up to a financial return that, um, that's going to move the needle for you. So um, what we're doing is uh, looking to fund retail trading account to help them overcome uh, the capitalization hurdle, which is, uh, which is one that um, traders generally struggle with. So that gives you a flavor of where I'm coming from. Um, you can reach out to me on LinkedIn if you want or check out my profile. Uh, it has more information on there. Um, so let's get into uh, some slides here. Uh, shared this last week, just quickly going over, just in terms of you know the, the broader themes that I'm, I'm watching in the markets or, or what I'm anticipating. Still um, see that we could potentially be, ter be coming into a major turning point for the dollar. Um, this is the dollar going back to the 1970s, and you can see the cycles here. Um, and how financial crises, market panics, etc., have impacted the dollar. And uh, from a cycle perspective, we, uh, we're reaching an inflection point here where we could see the dollar um, turn meaningfully lower. Uh, we also have this, uh, this slide from Goldman Sachs showing 16-year cycles in the dollar. 
um, what you'll notice that the turns don't tend to be um, don't tend to be uh, just one-off events. You know, we we often make a high retest or marginally exceed a high and then ultimately roll over. So whilst I have a, a structural view that you know I'm looking for for some dollar weakness, um, that doesn't mean it's necessarily going to immediately. Um, come to fruition. But that's certainly a theme that I've got in the back of my mind and one that I'm paying attention to. And it's predominantly driven by the fact that, um, you know, we're seeing a mass uh, liquidity provision from the from the Federal Reserve. And ultimately, I, I believe that that will, in time, lead to a weaker dollar. Certainly, when we consider um, the Fed's quantitative easing with respect to the um, the ECB, uh, this, these are projections um, from where we currently are and where we're, we're likely to to head to in terms of uh, in terms of liquidity. And you can see that the Fed is far outpacing um, the ECB. So at some point, that's going to come home to roost, and we uh, we likely see this this weak, weaker dollar. Um, at the moment, in terms of uh, opportunities that I'm watching or, or trades that I'm in, I've, I'm looking at the Australian dollar. And I had um, shared this with the guys in uh, in my trade team that we're seeing a, a potential near-term um, topping pattern here, I think, in the Australian dollar. And certainly the options markets are um, are indicating such. We're seeing a, um, a move in terms of the risk reversals, so the implied volatility premium for Aussie um, put so downside protection over calls has uh, has started to to tick up again, and um, and that uh, is is likely if not immediately, it's certainly going to we should start to see that feed through to the spot price, which should uh, which should should start to come down. Um, similar story in terms of implied volatility premiums, they're just starting to tick up again as well here in the Aussie, also in uh, in the Canadian dollar. Um, we saw some pretty decent reversals in um, in the Aussie and uh, and the Luna yesterday, and I'll we'll move on to the charts in a second. Uh, one of the trade that I'm in at the moment is um, is a Euro dollar. Um, got a sell signal on that last night, but and I, again I shared this with the guys. We 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 could well be uh, in the, in a period of, of lackluster um, spot movement as there are some big. Uh, we've got five billion dollars worth of option expiries in and around this uh, 187, uh, sorry, 108.75 to 109 level. Um, the majority of those are going to roll off today at 10 a.m. New York time, so that might free up this this uh, this euro dollar once we see um, some of those option structures removed. But certainly at the moment we're seeing a sticky price action in and around this 108.75. This is typically due to um, hedging that uh, that takes place um, by the by the option writers as price trades around the option strike um, nearer to that uh, that 10 a.m. cut in New York. Uh, other, some other interesting notes here. Um, this is from J.P. Morgan, their um, G10 FX desk. They're also starting to uh, to get a little bit bearish here in terms of the euro and uh, and the Aussie. You'll see here they're uh, they're highlighting. Um, the potential for a, for a, a near-term shift in terms of risk appetite. We've obviously seen a you know a drive off the lows certainly in the S&P, um, but as I've highlighted in a few of my daily market outlets, we're testing um, some some initial decision points here for the market. And um, these guys who are seeing the biggest amount of flows in terms of uh, in terms of their client order books, this uh, J.P. Morgan are. Uh, are have a, you know their the flow coming through their books is is probably the largest in the um, in the uh, interbank space at the moment and so I like to pay attention to um, to their flow information and it's starting to see the potential uh, for a near term turn here in the dollar and um, similar story here in credit agricole um, after seeing dollar selling last week well, they're, they're starting to see that. Uh, that ease now, and we're starting to see some some buying interest um, develop in terms of um, of the dollar index, and they're starting to see now some fresh selling interest as well in the euro. So you can see how this this flow dynamic and positioning of uh, some of the bigger players in the market um, is supportive 
of um, the view that we might see a pullback here. Uh, this is from BNP Paribas. We're also seeing the potential for um, declines in both the Australian dollar and um, and the Kiwi dollar here. Um, so we so in terms of what what we're looking to do as as retail guys is we're looking to try and ride the coattails of these these much bigger players. And so I use and share this information with my my trading team because um, when you can start to see a theme developing, um, then it's it's certainly worthwhile paying attention to. So let's jump onto the charts now and um, and start with that uh, with a dollar. Um, so there, there, but the dollar is basically, uh, you know, in no man's land at the moment. We're we're kind of in a neutral phase here, but we did see a bullish outside reversal um, from the uh, the monthly pivot here and the weekly S1. Um, we're now trading back into the weekly pivot, and like I said, we've got these big options rolling off in terms of the, the euro dollar. So we like, I think today we probably see a consolidation day, certainly until um, later on, uh, 3 p.m. UK times when those options expire um, we might see some some movement then another thing you should pay attention to today is that we're getting uh, jobless claims uh, we had dire retail sales data yesterday out of the us and that prompted this this move to safety in terms of the dollar um, as you know we saw we saw a sell off in risk assets and if we if these jobless claims um, you know come in on the the heavy side today um, then I think we'll see another another lurch to the dollar. Um, if we if we break from current levels, so if, whilst we hold this current swing low at 98.92, the upside objective, the equality move here is uh, is 101.62, and then we'll see how we trade. That's the next decision point. Um, we'll see how we trade there. Um, that would allow some of these oversold conditions in terms of the momentum studies in the dollar to unwind. And if we you know if we're getting back up into this area. 10160, uh, the weekly R2 there, and you know we get the momentum studies back above the 80 level. Uh, then I'll be watching for potential um, reversal patterns to to re-engage the dollar on the short side. And certainly, you know, in in light of what I in light of what I envisage is coming down the pike in terms of uh, the liquidity and, and how that's going to impact the dollar index, I'm paying close attention to um, to short setups and trying to see if I can build a, a structural position on the short side of the dollar. But for now, I'm, I'm long the dollar. Um, and again, that's trading, you know, I'm trading the signals I get from my, my strategy. And then I'm also using that strategy in, in light of the, the broader thematic um, view to try and then act, build um, more, more significant structural positions. So this is what I'm looking at in the dollar. Obviously, if we take out these lows at 98.90, then the next decision point on the downside is going to be this equality um, move down into the 98.46 area, which is also the 78.6% retracement of the move that we saw off the lows. So that would be the next key um, downside target if uh, if we don't manage to build on yesterday's um, yesterday's reversal. Again, if we can consolidate today and close within the high, you know, close, maybe we don't take out yesterday's high, that's fine. But if we can consolidate and get a green close here, closing up towards the highs, that would add to the conviction of this upside move. That would give that um, a bullish inside day um, setup, which uh, which often proves uh, which often proves positive in terms of the the outcome. So I mean, that's uh, we've just got to watch and see where we where we close on the dollar index, and certainly watching those jobless claims um, today to uh, to see what impact they have in terms of risk sentiment. So talking about broader risk sentiment, um, one of the charts obviously that I've shared, I shared um, on the blog is, uh, is this S&P and um, just highlighting where we are. We've come just shy of testing the equality move here off the lows. This is our um, first wave and this is the second wave. Um, and what we're looking at now is, uh, is we're in this 50% retracement, got the equality move just above. We did get a key day reversal yesterday, a bearish inside day. Um, so, I mean, we've certainly got some resistance here at the 2850 level. Um, I've, I'm looking to uh, to get to go short here on a break of yesterday's low. So I've got an order resting at the moment at 2755. Uh, what I'll do today is if that gets filled, I'll use today's high as a stop, um, you know, 10 ticks above today's high. So I'll just, show you how I'll play this. So I, I, I'm looking at uh, getting in at 27.55. Uh, 
and then I'll use um, today's high currently uh, we've got the 28.12 so I'll I'll give 10 ticks above that so 28.21 uh, um, now the initial uh, move that you know where I think we'll head to initially is down to this 26 area uh, 2600 so even by the time we get there I've got 1.6 times risk reward ratio working in my favor on, on this trade if, if it gets, if it plays out and i'll watch i'll go I'll, at this stage that trade will be risk-free for me because there's the potential here that we basically do a symmetry swing so you can see the the scale of the move that we saw here all we need to do is overlay that to there and you can see that that brings us directly into that support zone that i took that i was just mentioning and from there, we could make another move higher because whilst this is a, uh, you know, a key decision point, the next key decision point is actually the 78.6% retracement of the entire decline, okay, and the 161 extension of this initial swing off the lows. So if we hold 26 and we get and I get a bullish reversal, I'd actually move. I'd, I'd, I'd be risk-free in my short anyway. I'd actually put on another long there um, to trade up for a test of this 31, uh, the 31, uh, where are we? 31, 36 to 31, 80 uh, will be the, the key upside objective. But what I'm cognizant of, and the reason why I put the shorts on, is that from a technical perspective, we've satisfied the minimum criteria really for for this correction versus that that leg that we saw to the downside. As, uh, as the crisis really starts to take hold. So technically, we could well now see an equality move to the downside. Um, you know, in light of uh, the recent flows we've seen, the market has certainly um, started to move to a more bullish stance. Um, some of these larger uh, investment banks, their research departments, not so much their trading desks, but their research departments are certainly uh, bulled up on the market at the moment. Uh, and that tends to be just about the time that we see the turn. I mean, by the time we, when we were trading down here at these lows, you know, you had the Goldman Sachs research department saying we were going to 2000 and we popped. And you've, you've just this week, the Goldman Sachs, again, I stress the research department, these aren't their traders. These are, you know, the market analysts and, and research guys. Um, it's more marketing um, information more than anything else. But they, they've got very bullish here now. They, they, they issued a note this week saying that uh, they think the lows are in and, um, you know, we'll be seeing new highs. So, um, you know, that, those tend to be pretty decent in, indicators, contra, uh, contrary indicators um, from, for a sentiment perspective. So, there, you know, the, 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 the potential here and, um, you know, I, I take it step by step, day by day, don't want to get ahead of myself, but the potential is that we could see that equality move. And that, you know, even technically, this, even if this pattern plays out, it's still actually corrective. You know, that's still just a correction. And then we could take off from these lower levels um, and then start to build. Certainly, if we think in terms of a time scale, you know, this would take, if we, I doubt we'll see an equality in terms of, um, the, the, the velocity that we saw to the downside again, unless we get some really dire um, news regarding uh, maybe a second wave in the, in the COVID crisis. But for now, what I would anticipate is this move would likely be more of a grind, um, probably taking us into that mid-summer period. And by then we could be start, you know, they, we could be starting to hear about a vaccine being developed, etc. And that, well, I mean, for, at the moment. That's really what what's, what these markets, are, the risk markets certainly are, are going to be hinging on. Once we've got clear visibility on a vaccine, you can expect these these markets to to start to take off again. But for now, we don't have that. And um, you know, Spain, for example, came out um, just today, and um, they've had an increase in terms of infections for the first time in six days. So I mean, we, you know, there's I think the the market's probably got ahead of itself here. But you know, I've got key levels that I'm watching. So you know, I'll be short through yesterday, um, through yesterday's lows. Sorry, through Monday's lows. Um, but I'll be risk-free by the time we get to 20. If we get to 2600, who knows? You know, maybe we come down and, and pop higher. That's you know, I, like I said, I'm not. The outcome of each trade is not something that I'm uh, I'm, I'm concerned about. But I, you know, I have a plan for each trade and a process. 
and that's uh, that's what I'm you know that's what I stick to. So I've got a signal. I'm in you know I'm in a decision point um, area in terms of the, the market structure, and so I've uh, I've, I've got that order in place uh, for the S and P. Um, and then you know that that if we think about risk uh, proxies, the Aussie has pretty much been trading in tandem um, with the S and P. And as such, I've also got a signal, a sell signal um, last night in terms of the Aussie yen, uh, which you know you can see the similarities in terms of um, of the price patterns uh, with the with the S and P here, and there's the the Aussie yen. Obviously, the chart's blowing up a bit, but let's just do it here. So you get the idea in terms of the, the uh, correlation we're seeing in terms of the Aussie N as a risk um, instrument. So I'm also, I've got an order to sell um, sell this Aussie Yen uh, down through uh, yesterday's lows. So um, just a tick or two below, um, 67.50, I think I've, I've got. And so again, I use the same strategy here. I'll if I get filled on that order, I'll be um, I'll have a stop 10 pips above today's high, so I get in, improved risk reward as opposed to having to risk this whole candle here. Um, you know, 160 pips. I can get I can tighten that up to about 70 or 80 pips there. And similar idea, really. I'll be using you know once if I get filled on the trades, I'll be looking at a symmetry swing as the first area of potential support for the market. Which again, in this instance, will put us back down into the the monthly pivot. Okay, so we've we've tested it, tested below the monthly pivot, closed back above it. We saw the run higher in line with with risk sentiment, and um, and now we're seeing this pause. So if we if we break break the lows, get filled, the first area I'll be looking at is this 65.94 area. Now, if we don't find support there, um, then I'll be looking. And again, we've got this this trend line. We've We've tested it. Um, we're, we've opened up below it now, so this is adding conviction to this this trade. Um, so, if we don't find support at the 66 level, then what I want to do is bring in the, uh, the Fib retracement tool here, and the next target in terms of this trade to the downside will actually be the 50% retracement area. So, if we don't find support at uh, at 66. Then I'll be looking for a move down to 6460, um, which again, you know, it will give me at that stage about 300 pips in terms of upside. And uh, from a risk reward perspective, that's a 4.2 uh, return versus my risk. Okay, so that's the the play that I'm looking at in the Aussie yen. I'm currently short the Australian dollar. I got filled overnight um, as we spiked lower. So. Similar scenario, you can see we've corrected into this 50. This we actually held the 61.8% trace. I don't have it on my chart here. Let's just uh, see, um, just because I don't uh, you can see we tested in, we, we tested the 61.8% almost to the pit, and then we got that bearish outside candle. So, um, you know, that's a signal for me. We're testing up into the volatility support uh, resistance bands. We've got the monthly VWAP coming in here. Uh, the dailies flip bearish as of last night, so I I got filled on a, a break of last night's lows. And what I'm what I'm looking at here, we could consolidate a bit um, now uh, as we as risk sentiment. It's, we'll have to if we get a rollover in the S and P, then I, I'm anticipating this Aussie will roll over. But so I'm going to give this a little bit of room to breathe here, and I'm using a stop just above uh, the the near term and longer term VWAP. So. I'm, uh, I've got it in around um, 63, 66. So you know we could consolidate a bit here. Um, and again, in terms of strategy for managing the trade, we've got this symmetry swing. So we'll be looking. I'll be looking for a move back down to test um, 62. So at that stage, the trade will be risk-free for me. Um, if nobody's in at 62 and they don't, you know, the buyers don't show up. Well, then it's the same story in terms of targets. You know, we look then for a move back down to test 60. Um, again, we could, you know, from here, we could we could find some some initial support, but then what we'd get is pretty nice uh, potential head and shoulders pattern, which could take us back down to 78.6 here at 57. So either way, I'll be risk-free by the time, I, you know, we trade into the 60 area, 
Um, and if we don't find support there, then um, then I can see us trading down into this 60 level. The um, similar to the the idea in terms of the uh, the S and P with that 78.6 percent retracement. If we hold this 60 level, then what we could see is another leg of upside here, quality move, that would then take us into this big a uh, equality leg. So uh, this leg here. So this would A B. And then we have the CD completing here, okay? So we could trade up into there, and we, then we've got the 78.6% uh, retracement, we've got the monthly R1, and you can see then we'd be trading nicely back into these prior lows here. And, um, and certainly at that stage, I'd be looking at um, a, a potential shorts, um, but like I say, I've got a valid signal now, in the train we'll see how that one um plays out but you can see again how I, you know have a plan that i'm i'm working with in terms of managing my risk managing the trade a um, couple of others that i've got i've got a I've got a signal in the euro that i've already talked about um, but really the euro is the same idea here in terms of the, do the dollar index what i've got now is we've got a potential a b c d with the target here for this initially was would be back into what could be a pretty meaningful um, double bottom in terms of the euro. I, do, I don't know that for, for you know, obviously we, that's unknown at this stage, but if we did get that move, you know, that would broadly coincide with, um, you know, this dollar index. Uh, we could see a push through the equality objective here and up into the 161, and we could see pretty major uh, potential for, uh, for a double top there in the dollar index. And so that's, um, so I'm trading, you know, I've got the signal, we're at the monthly VWAP getting, we saw a rejection yesterday. We're trading in around this, uh, the weekly pivot. Like I said, we've got these big options uh, rolling off this afternoon. So um, we'll see if that, you know, can free this up to the downside. We're kind of the, the one of the things that um, is less appealing about this, this setup is the, uh, the fact that we're in kind of in no man's land here in terms of the momentum studies. But from a trend perspective, uh, we, you know, holding that that this midpoint um, can certainly un, un, <coughs> unlock some bearish downside, so that we get this um, momentum study down into that overbought, uh, sorry, oversold area, setting up the idea then for for a long from uh, from a potential double bottom um, into this 106.30 area. So again, I'm using, I've got a stop just above uh, the VWAP here, um, because what you'll, you'll tend to find, once these moves start, they tend to respect the VWAP. So I use a stop 10 pips above the VWAP, uh, just to give me a bit of wiggle room and see if, uh, if this one's gonna play out. Uh, another trade I'm, I'm looking at at the moment is the Singapore dollar. Um, I've had, uh, had a good month trading this last, last month. I've um, got stops here, on a long position, um, but we've got another long signal here. The, the, what, the, one of the things that um, that I would have preferred to have seen is that we complete, you know, that we'd achieve this equality swing. We haven't done that, you, you know, you, you, you can't get everything all the time in terms of the technical setup, but, you know, do we meet the minimum criteria? Well, yeah, we've tested the 50% retracement, tested the monthly pivot, we've got a bullish reversal, we've tested the VWAP, uh, the 20 period VWAP bands, and we've got a bullish um, a bullish monthly VWAP, and we've got the RSI stochastic down below the 20 and um, and positively diverging. So, you know, does it tick enough boxes for a trade? Yeah, it does. And um, and I've got an order in um, to buy that at, uh, at 42.90. And again, you know, I'll just use wherever we get these, wherever our overnight lows are now, as um, as my stop, 10 pips below. So let's just, just to be clear, uh, long. So like I say, 42.90 is the entry, and I'd just give it 10 or so pips below the low. And ultimately what I'd be looking for is, you know, a double top really at this stage initially. Um, and again, that feeds into the dollar index idea of, a, uh, of the potential for a double top. In terms of managing it, well, um, we're probably already at the symmetry swing here. 
not, not far from it. So once we get up into this, if, if we see 43.60, so I'll be running 70 or 80 pips in profit by that stage, um, risk-free for me again, because you know we could this we could hit the symmetry swing, and similar to the other patterns that I've talked about, um, that could set up the final swing down to complete a more complex correction. But even at that stage, we're um, you know we're in uh, we're in another great setup there uh, for a, for a long uh, because we're trading back into those prior breakout highs. Uh, we did the volatility sport, and we would have completed the ABCD quality move, and we'd be at the 50% retracement of the entire move from um, from the March lows up into the highs. And so what you get a sense of at the moment certainly is that you know kind of all these these uh, these these trades we're looking at are pretty much linked. Um, to one degree or another, to, to the S and P. So I mean, if uh, what we to get these trades really moving, um, we'd want to see the S and P roll over and money move into the dollar safe haven again um, in the near term, um, and then we'd see how that how that plays out um, in terms of managing the positions. The other one that uh, that reversed pretty heavily yesterday. Again, we're not seeing any follow through at the moment. Is the uh, is the Lumi. So you know we took out the trend line resistance we're consolidating here um so i'll see you know if we can if we can get a bullish uh, if we can get uh if we can get a break through the highs um of uh of the day then you know again this this is another low risk uh, relatively low risk reward um setup because if, I can, if we get a signal there um then again you can uh, you can make the risk reward Pretty attractive because you know if I, if I go long through the high, the overnight highs, a couple of pips above, um, and then I use a stop below, uh, ten pips below the overnight low, and then you know I don't need to see much movement before um, before it's working in my favour from a risk reward perspective. So you know again symmetry swing here, and um, and then we you know you want to be risk free as you trade into that 4280 area. Um, the overnight high is uh, it's 41 30, 36 so 41 45 would be my entry um, or 41 40 probably and um, and then I'd want to be risk free by the time I'm trading 40 to 80 so I'm already up a, you know over 100 pips there so again risk reward perspective you can uh, you can really make that work uh, as we consolidate here and again the, the and the reason why I've been watching those um, those symmetry moves because we haven't seen the equality of objective to the downside met here, and so what I perceive is is the risk is that we get the symmetry swing again. You're starting to see a theme develop here, guys. I'm sure uh, we get into that symmetry swing, and then uh, we can still roll over from there to complete the equality move before really taking off again to the upside. So I'm I'm always I'm, a, I'm always cautious. Whereby, uh, when I see these these like incomplete sequences, um, I don't want to get uh, get too heavily involved in terms of loading up on risk here. But you know, I can, these I can make these trades work for me from a risk reward perspective by using these inside consolidations, or as I refer to them, the Asian range break trades, to uh, to tighten up my risk reward and see if we get the the move. But certainly, I'm paying attention to the symmetry swing areas as um, as when we hold those. Then we could likely see the third, you know, third, a third leg down in terms of the correction. It's still corrected at that stage. You know, we haven't, from a uh, from a technical perspective, it, everything's intact. And um, and again, we'd just be that would bring us into the 61.8% retracement, and uh, and then we'd have that quality move. So again, that's another one I'm going to put on uh, or have a look at um, once I uh, once I jump off this call. Okay, guys, um, that's all I really wanted to uh, to review in terms of opportunities today. You know, keep an eye on these uh, these initial jobless claims. Keep an eye on the S and P and the dollar. They, you know, these these instruments are really driving um, the markets at the moment. And um, and you know, you need to be cognizant of the levels uh, in both of those instruments as uh, as they're going to prove pivotal. Um, for this next phase of market development, um, does anyone have any questions? Uh, with respect to any charts I've covered, or does anyone have a chart they'd like me to take a look at for them? Yeah. 
you type a, an, an N in the chat box so that I know that, um, that I haven't left anyone behind here. Okay, if there aren't any questions, guys, I'll, uh, I'll wrap this one up here and, um, and I'll see you all. You can follow, uh, you can follow me on TradingView uh, through the FX Career Swap. I try and post, um, post some charts there uh, when I, as and when I have time. Um, but if not, I'll, uh, I'll catch you guys uh, same time next week. Thanks very much for your time. I hope this helps.